Mark Zuckerberg introduced what he calls the metaverse, a platform where users will interact in virtual and I understand you have been active in the metaverse yourself and have an avatar of your own. That we're going into this thinking about how we can shape this. Big tech, big brands, big ambitions. People and companies start with an idea and then it quickly spikes into a total hype cycle. And then it craters and everyone says, yeah, that's the technology is growing fast. More and more people are beginning to get into virtual reality with a predicted population of over 1 billion people by the year 2030. That number is absolutely insane. That's over two times the population of the United States and over one tenth of the entire world population. To put it in a real perspective, here's a visual representation of 1 million and here's a visual representation of 1 billion. Yeah, this is cool and all, but where exactly am I going with this? Well, like I said before, the technology is growing fast. Since so many people are hopping onto the VR train, this creates a higher demand for more products and more advanced development. Studies have shown that people from the ages of 16 to 34 years of age, or the younger audience, account for 69% of all users on virtual reality. Nice. With the fast technological progression in the virtual reality industry, and the main demographic being younger generations, this allows for more advanced technology. However, this can lead to bad things because, historically speaking, older generations have a harder time grasping onto the more advanced technology than the youngins. Now, I'm not saying that older generations can't and won't grasp the technology, I'm saying that it could be more difficult as it progresses. Kathleen Boyle helps show this in one of her articles stating, quote, have you ever had one of those aha light bulb moments when you realize your grasp of technology or lack thereof showed your age, end quote. She writes a little bit more and then eventually leads on to say, quote, what I did not do, or should I say could not do, was operate my avatar, make it walk or interact. Given the speed at which the metaverse is advancing, I need to learn this quickly because it was very obvious I was an unsavvy older person in the metaverse, end quote. Wow, that was a lot. It's clear that the development of VR in its current state isn't exactly the most user-friendly. For example, Slime VR is an affordable full-body tracking solution that requires no base stations to use. The cheap price allows for more people to be interested and it's clear it draws a lot of attention. However, these trackers need a server to run on your computer as well as a tech-savvy mind in order to get through the setup process. If you're not the smartest when it comes to technology, this probably won't be the easiest to use. This leads back to older generations using virtual reality, in which, in the nicest way possible of saying, stereotypically isn't that great at using technology. However, there is a solution to this. This is something that developers can work on, creating more user-friendly applications and hardware that can allow the inclusion of people who aren't great with more advanced technology. This is something that I have to give props to Meta. The Quest 2 has a very user-friendly UI and everything in it is easy to use and grasp for first-time users, including myself, whenever I first got my Quest. Think about this scenario. You want a PvP shooter game that has vehicles, guns, snipers, anything you can name, and your main goal for this is just to join a lobby and have fun lighting up the enemy team. Two examples of these games are Call of Duty and Arma 3. Even though these games have everything you want, they're both entirely different when compared to each other. Arma 3 is super advanced, requiring a full-size keyboard to do almost anything, requiring DLCs and even HODAs for certain vehicles. Joining lobbies are difficult, and modding is completely out of even my brain capacity. While Call of Duty is more user-friendly and the basic game that you think about and want, all you have to do is click quick play and you're in a match firing at the other teams on the other side of the map. Realistically, you would buy Call of Duty since it's easier to use and has everything you want. This ties into user friendliness within the VR industry. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's chill out for a second. Uh, quick shout out to these lovely, beautiful people for supporting me on my previous videos. You all mean the world to me and I really appreciate it. And without you, I wouldn't be doing this. So thank you. Also, sorry for not uploading within the past two weeks. Uh, I just haven't had the will and desire to edit. So yeah, thanks for just being patient with me. Back to the video. Let's talk about progression, and I'm talking technological progression and people's ability to accept it. 
Some people lack the will to accept the fact that we are progressing in society, just like how people don't accept modern day trends, interests, music, and culture. Usually, this is the older generations. Vsauce, yeah, you know. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Once made a video about this, with the word to describe it as juvenoia. Juvenoia is described as an exaggerated fear about the influence of social changes on children and youth. And while this sort of ties into it, the expression should more align with the term reject modernity and embrace tradition. Ah, yes, the meme quote. Listen, I may sound harsh here, but most older folks don't like moving towards the future and would rather be with the old traditional times than progress forward. That's how it's always been, even for your parents, and their parents, and their parents, and so on. That's just how people work. But I don't think this should be a reason that we don't continue to push VR towards more mainstream. Just because it's not traditional should not be a reason that we don't progress forward. A lot of people, specifically older generations, are skeptical of it and aren't willing to accept it. And honestly, they have good reasons to be skeptical. Big business creates monopoly and antitrust lawsuits are being thrown at them left and right. But if you look past all of that and just in the VR industry and technological progression in general and as a whole, it creates easier accessibility, more fun, and plenty of new and good ideas. So what to take away from this? Well, first, accessibility and user friendliness will allow all age groups to come together and enjoy VR to its fullest. On top of this, the acceptance of technological progression by older age groups will allow more people to join VR and have fun. Both of these things need work, obviously, and with that being said, it's going to have to happen, or at least I think. This is because VR is going to be with us in the future. Everybody's going to have a headset, and it's going to be a major part of our lives. We all know that I think this. And with that being said, I am Mario. Mario.